Hello, welcome to Shubhra Ranjan IES. Today, I, am, I will be covering the weekly current affairs from 4th of December to 10th of December. I will be covering the subject of geography, environment and ecology. Here, I will discuss four topics. The first topic is the IUCN Red List. The second is Kaziranga Project. The third is Samir Volcano. And the fourth one is Cheetah Day. So these all four topics were in news and you have been through these topics through several mediums. Either it may be YouTube or either it may be a newspaper. But here we will study it with a different approach. So before starting my session, please give a thumbs up, please give a comment and please subscribe the Subraranjan IS. So let's begin with our first topic, IUCN Red List. So this news was recently in the Hindu newspaper and it was mentioned that IUCN has recently added three Himalayan medicinal plants. So the person behind these three plants was Dr. Harsh Kumar Chauhan. So he is a member of IUCN and due to efforts of Shubhra Ranjan team, we were able to contact with him and let's listen from the horse's mouth, Dr. Harsh Chauhan. I'm Dr. Harsh Chauhan from Kumar University, Nanitan. I'm thankful to Vijay Latwal for giving me the opportunity to interact with you. Well, recently one of my research work regarding IUCN species assessment is in news and acknowledged in the Hindu. I'm a member of IUCN Species Survival Commission Medicinal Plant Specialist Group. I work in the Himalayas. As you are aware, the Indian Himalayas harbors huge diversity of medicinal plants. About 1,748 plants having medicinal importance are reported from the region. But the region is data deficient and lots of species are not assessed for their threat status. Recently, I have assessed three species, Mesotropis palliata as critically endangered, Dactylorhiza hattagiriya as endangered, and Fritillaria chirosa as vulnerable. These assessments will help in setting conservation priorities for the species in region. Now the question arises, how this red list is used? Well, the IUCN red list shows us where and what actions need to be taken to save the nature from extinction. It provides a straightforward way to biodiversity needs into decision-making process by providing a wealth of useful information on the species. The IUCN criteria divides species into nine categories that will be discussed by Vijay. Without taking much time, wish you all the best in your future and Good luck. Thank, thank you, Vijay. Thank you so much, Dr. Harsh, for enlightening us. Now let's begin with the first research. The first plant which was in news, its name is Mesotropis palita. It is also known as Patwa in the local language of Uttarakhand and it is endemic to Uttarakhand. So why it is mentioned in IUCN red list? See, there can be many causes for the red list categorization, but here the critically endangered status given to this plant was due to its quality. Like this plant is so much rich in antioxidant, its oil is used in many drugs, several pharmaceutical com com companies use, use this plant as a medicinal plant. But the situation arises of critically endangered status just because of the several activities by human being. Like this plant is threatened so much due to climatic changing climatic conditions due to deforestation, due to the uh, change in the soil, okay, these all factors lead to the degradation of this plant. The next plant which is in news is uh, Dectoloriza hetageria. So it is also known as Salman Panja. And this, uh, this plant is also added in the IUCN red list. But the category here, you have to notice it, the category here is changed. The category is endangered. 
See the first one was critically endangered and this is endangered. So, in examination there can be a confusion the examiner may ask a question and confuse you. So, you have to be clear okay, about this. So, what is the significance like this plant is also used in several medical treatments okay whether it it can be the treatment can be your ulcers the treatment can can related to your abdom, ab, abdominal pain the treatment can related relate to your bronchitis pain okay this all things have its own importance but here also the study say that the decline of this species is around 30 percent in past 10 years. So, what are the major factors which, is, which are responsible for the decline of this plant? See, there is a habitat loss, we can say the habitat loss is there. There is a livestock grazing, there is a deforestation, okay. there is a climate change. So, for both plants, the category in the category of decline is same okay now the third plant which is in news is fletilaria cirrhosa okay this was in news and this was also added in red list but there is a differentiation like this was added in a vulnerable category like the vulnerable category defines the iucn defines the vulnerable category as not much declining in process okay so what about this plant this is commonly known as himalayan flitaria and this is a bulbous herb like the previous one was the leguminous herb which was the previous one dactyloriza hetageria was a legume legume plant and this is the bulb plant okay so what are the important of this plant so the importance of this plant it is used in many pharmaceutical companies as a strong cough suppressant and source of exporterant drugs. So, this plant is very famous in China, in China, okay. The China, the Chinese company use this plant in many diseases which deals with lungs, okay. Either it can be asthma, either it can be any, any disease related to lung cancer, okay. So, you have to identify the difference between the three plants. The first one is related to antioxidants, okay. Antioxidants help in overall build of your body. The second one is related to the uh, pain and medicines related to uh, 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 related to improve the uh, digestion, improve the um, problems related to abdominal pain and the third is related to lungs, okay. So, here we will move to our second topic which is was in news it is the kajiranga project see recently with the india and french made a partnership of around 80 million euros to save the kajiranga national park so this project was announced in 2014 but the date which from from where it is started as 2014 to 2024. So, what is special about this project? As you all know that Kajiranga have the largest number of rhinoceros in the world. Okay, So, it becomes very important uh, for the rhinoceros as we have discussed in our previous class that sites, appendix, the rhinoceros has moved from appendix 2 to appendix 1. So, we have discussed it. So, the rhinosaurus is always in news okay so let's uh, hear from the slide okay let's listen, uh, let's study the slide india and france are collaborating on kajiranga project as i have told you see the agency included here is afd okay afd is a french company which is committed for funding of 80 million from 2014 to 2024 and what is the Kajiranga project all about. Okay. The Kajiranga is a project which is part of larger Assam project on forest and biodiversity conservation. So, APFBC is a project of Assam government which is the parent body of this project and this project comes under it. Okay. The second thing is that reforestation. The main aim of uh, this project is to reforest uh, to 
reforestate to so mo many more trees like the area which is covered around 33,500 hectare of land which is covered for the reforestation. The third thing which was in news that training of around 10,000 community members should be done till 2024. See why the project is including the local people. Any project cannot be completed without the help of localites. Okay? So, there is a requirement, there, uh, there is a vision behind every project that there should be an employment generation as well. So, in this project, they have tried to give the employment to around 10,000 people from the local area to uh, improve their condition. Okay? Uh, what about the next slide? See, in this slide, I have mentioned the seven national parks in Assam. So many times the question uh, come in examination about national parks where it is situated. So we will go in detail. These all parks are situated in Assam itself. Okay, so don't confuse with Arunachal or Meghalaya. Like the first park is Raimuna Park. The second is Manas. The third is Orang. The fourth is Namiri. The fifth is Kaziranga. So we were talking about this park Kaziranga, which is situated nearby the Brahmaputra river. We will see in later slide. And this is the Diheng Patkai and this is Debru Shaikhova. So just analyze this and just analyze, just make a brain map of these parks. In your, in your, in your brain sometimes they ask, arrange these parks from uh, in the following order from west to east, okay, from north to south. There are many types of question which can, which can be found from these topics, okay. See, uh, the Rai Mona Park was in news because it was notified in 2021 itself. So, it also becomes a topic of current, okay. We can't leave this topic, okay. Rai Mona, pehle kabhi humne suna bhi bhot kam hai is park ke baare mein. So, just memorize this park, okay. The second is that Dehing Patkai National Park notified in June 21. So, these both parks the Hing Patkai Park okay, and Rai Mona. So, these park can be a upcoming question for your examination. So, everything you have to study while uh, study while focusing your examinations. Okay? Don't go too much in detail. Just hear this. See, what are the key facts about Kajiranga National Park? We have to study it while reading the Kajiranga project. We, have, we, we should know about the Kajiranga National Park. See, the important thing is that it is located in the state of Assam. I have told you. It is the single largest undistributed representative area in the Brahmaputra Valley footplain. Okay? And what is the legal status? National Park, it was declared a National Park in 1974. Okay? It was declared Tiger Reserve in 2007. And what is the international status? UNESCO World Heritage Site in 1985 and it is recognized as an important bird area by the Bird Life International. So, this park comprises of many things like several species, you can say the biodiversity is too much in this park just because of the local climate, just because of the local um, area, local topography. So, in next slide, I will show you that what is a kind of variety we can find in the Kajiranga National Park. Okay. Uh, see, this is the roadmap of the Brahmaputra River, and Pobitro Wildlife Sanctuary has the highest density of one horned rhino. See, why I have mentioned the Pobitro uh, Wildlife Sanctuary? Why I mentioned this? I mentioned this because it is the only second highest density park after Kajiranga Park. So, when Kajiranga comes in, um, uh, when Kajiranga becomes important, so the Pobitro Park is also just next to it. Okay, the, and what are the? Uh, sometimes the question may arise uh, from uh, what are the national highways or what are the rivers which flow from a particular uh, national park? So here, in the highway 37 passes through the Kajiranga National Park. Okay. Now, now we will move to our next slide. 
see uh, i have discussed it that there is a lot of diversity in this kajiranga national park we can see the river map like which river sometimes the river can be asked it although it is in detail but you have to memorize it like dhiplu river is in kajiranga park okay these are the roads okay this is the zone which is specifically designed for a uh, particular species like kabhi question aata hai ki abhi jaise ki we can see the image we can see the tiger okay sometimes question arise kajiranga is Uh, the tiger are also found in kaziranga so don't be don't be confused okay you can see you can memorize from the image itself and also assam is too much closer to bengal so there is a chances of uh, there is a chances of transportation or there is a chances of um, a movement of tigers from bengal to this area as well okay so just memorize it what what uh, what kind of all rivers what kind of all animals we can find over here okay this is the brahmaputra river and we will move to our next topic next question uh, this was the previous year question uh, from the park itself consider the following pairs which of the above pairs are correctly matched see corbett national park river flowing through it as i have told you that ki kabhi kabhi question pucha jata hai ki kaun se park se kaun si river and you can see that 2013 में क्वेश्चन आया था कॉर्बेट नेशनल पार्क से गंगा रिवर निकलती है दिस दिस द फर्स्ट टॉपिक इज द फर्स्ट ऑप्शन इज रॉन्ग ओके कौन सी गंगा निकलती है इट इज राम गंगा ओके इट टच इज कॉर्बेट नेशनल पार्क एंड दिस इज काजीरंगा नेशनल पार्क से कौन सी रिवर निकलती है आइदर इट कुड बी डिप्लू और आइदर इट कुड बी ब्रह्मपुत्रा ओके एंड द साइलेंट वैली नेशनल पार्क वेयर इट इज लोकेटेड it is located in south india so these kinds of question can arise okay and it has already arisen in many examinations so this will bring you a clarity about what to study and how to study okay the next uh, topic which i will discuss is someru volcano see someru volcano was recently in news and it was erupted in indonesia okay why this uh, why this volcano become so important uh, like it uh, because it was considered as a greatest volcano in indonesian island and recently just just because of the uh, eruption of uh, the sumeru volcano there there was a loss of many lives okay so we will study about sumeru volcano uh, it is also known as the great mountain okay it is the highest volcano in java and one of the most active just highlight the most active volcano it is previously erupted in december 2021 okay good now it was uh, already erupted in 2021 again it was erupted in december 4th okay so this become a topic for news okay indonesia with the maximum number of active volcanoes in the world this is a fact okay you can use it okay this is the process subduction of indo australian plate below the sunda plate part of the eurasian plate see this is the conceptual point i have uh, kept in this see what is subduction uh, we will understand it by a diagram see when two plates okay when two plates collide with each other okay the plate like this is the suppose that this is the heavy plate this is the lighter plate okay this is heavily dense and this is lightly dense okay what will happen that after a few moment of this plate this plate will subduct okay this plate will subduct and it will go around 700 okay kilometers from the earth surface okay when it will reach to this distance there will be a eruption of volcano this 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 position is also known as benef zone okay what is subduction when one denser plate moves below the uh, lighter plate and that can be of continental continental or that can be of continental oceanic so in this scenario uh, there was a trench which is formed just because of uh, the subduction of Uh, the australian plate and the eurasian plate so this uh, this uh, uh, this trench is known as sunda trench okay 
what is trench like this depth this depth which is created due to formation of two plates is known as trench okay now we will go to our next slide where it is located see this is the map of indonesia this is indian ocean and we can find the sumeru over here got my point just remember this it is in which it is in java okay and this is indonesia okay and this is the factual information when it happened it happened on december 4 dozens of people killed almost 3700 people have been evacuated so this becomes important for your examination point of view now we are discussing volcano so we must discuss the recent erupted volcano as well as the volcanoes which are relevant to indian subcontinent okay now the recently erupted volcanoes are sange volcano where it is situated it is situated in ecuador this is a tal volcano it is situated in philippines it is mount shina bung merapi volcano it is in indonesia see where is philippines i can show you in in previous map we can see that philippines area is this right तो यहाँ पे ताल वेलकनो इरप्ट हुआ था और ये तीनों ही वेलकनो इम्पॉर्टेंट है एग्जामिनेशन पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू से बिकॉज द इरप्शन द अमाउंट ऑफ इरप्शन एंड द अमाउंट ऑफ डैमेज दे हैव डन इट इज़ क्वाइट ह्यूमंगस ओके द थर्ड थिंग इज दैट वॉल्केनोज रिलेटेड टू इंडिया सो वट आर द वॉल्केनोज यू हैव बीन थ्रू मैनी वॉल्केनोज देर इज ओनली वन एक्टिव वॉल्केनो इन इंडियन सब कॉन्टिनेंट इट इज नोन एज बैरेंड आईलैंड इट इज एन अंडमान आईलैंड ओके एंड दिस इज नारकोंडम this is baratang andaman island volcano this is deccan traps maharashtra there is this is a these all are dead volcanoes okay the only active volcano we have is in barren island just remember this the only active volcano indian subcontinent have is in barren island okay and these all are dead volcanoes like there is a dhino dhinodhar hills gujarat okay dhosi hill haryana these all are dead volcanoes okay just remember this now the question uh, which was arisen in 2018 the barren island volcano is an active volcano located in indian territory okay this will be the correct this is quite easy now the second is the barren island lies about 140 km east of great nicobar now the question 140 km east of great nicobar see this type of options you will able to solve only after you have a good grasp on map reading okay you have to understand it is talking about 140 km just 140 km okay the third is the last time the barren island volcano erupted was in 1991 and it has remained inactive since then see what i have told this is the active volcano and here is the catch that they have mentioned it is inactive so from the options only one is correct okay now we will move to our next slide and the next topic which was uh, in news uh, from past four months and it is related to cheetah see why again the cheetah is so important for examination because on december 4th we have celebrated the cheetah day and why i selected this topic for your current because i just want to make the topic much more relevant for your examination perspective okay you have to emphasize on certain topics so that you will grab a strong hold on these topics and you won't miss any type of question from these topics okay now why in news every year international cheetah day is celebrated and who is behind this sometimes they ask who is behind the nomenclature of certain day or certain animal or certain revolution anything they can ask you the name so this is a factual question you have to learn it dr lori marker okay the dr lori mark i have meant i am just emphasizing this because the cheetahs were in news recently okay what are the kind of cheetahs see there are two kind of cheetahs generally majorly there are two kind of cheetahs the first is the african and the second is the asiatic see what is the difference between these two cheetahs the iucn status of african cheetah is vulnerable it means they have sufficient sufficient amount okay and the asiatic cheetah is critically endangered see what is the difference like in critically endangered the species which are 
at utmost danger, okay, they are near about to extinction. So, we mentioned this in the critically endangered status. Like what is the site's status? It is mentioned in appendix 1 of the list and same here. Like for sites, the sites consider this um, animal as very rare and they want to protect this. What happened, I have discussed in my first class, there were there are three appendix, appendix 1, appendix 2 and appendix 3. So, just for your revision, in appendix 1, we make sure that nothing non-governmental activity or anything related to poaching, everything should be in a manner to secure the animal. Okay? The appendix uh, 1 is so strict and so focused that there is nothing uh, you, you cannot find any kind of loopholes in appendix 1. The so, same goes for appendix 2, what, what, uh, what they have done in appendix 2, they have made it uh, little bit lenient as compared to appendix 1. Like what about the lenient, like you can do the trade in appendix 2 with the permit and in appendix 1 you cannot do the trade, only the trade is allowed for the medicinal purpose. Okay? And the third is the distribution, see I will show you in the next slide what is the distribution of these African and Asiatic cheetah. See around uh, 6500 to 7500 African cheetahs present in wild and only 40 to 50 found in uh, in the Asiatic cheetah which are only 52 found in Iran. See you can see the difference between both Asiatic and African cheetah. Got my point? See I will share the physio physical characteristics you must know uh, these, this is just for your um, uh, enhancing your knowledge. Like the image of uh, African cheetah, it is bigger in size and compared to Asiatic cheetah. And what about this one? It is smaller in size, okay? Uh, it has a smaller head and a longer neck, usually have red eyes and they have more cat-like appearance. So, this is, this is the factual information. Just for your interest, I have added it. And this is the important thing. See. Uh, we can see two maps. Okay, one map of, one map is of Africa and second one is of India. See where the range of Asiatic cheetah were present during the British Empire. Okay, British Empire ke time pe kitna fela hua tha, kitna, uh, there was a huge amount of cheetahs present in Indian subcontinent. But due to poaching and hunter and hunters and due to illegal trade, no, the the number of cheetahs certainly got decline okay and here is the distribution of cheetah in the african continent see do you remember my first class this area is also very rich in one more thing i told you one more thing what was that these all nations namibia zimbabwe south africa these all nations are having the surplus surplus elephant okay so these countries require these countries want to make the ivory trade legal okay you just just you connect with the topic like this area is also rich in cheetah as well this area is also rich in uh, um, elephant as well okay so i have discussed this you can go to my first lecture and you will find the details about sites and ivory trade in my first chapter now there was a question in 2012 consider the following which of the above are naturally found in india see india se extension ho gaya hai and there is a question for you recently the indian government has brought the cheetahs from africa and the question for you is that in which national park or in which state they are they are saved or they are uh, protected okay you have to mention in which state they brought the cheetah see there is a question consider the following which one is above are the naturally found in india see the all the cheetahs uh, you can see uh, from the previous map the cheetah the asiatic cheetah is now uh, imported from the other countries, there is no sign of Asiatic cheetah. We have brought the African cheetah in Indian subcontinent. Okay, uh, this is the end of uh, my slide. 
uh, thank you for being here. Please do a like and please comment the questions which I asked and please give your uh, suggestions so that uh, our improvement uh, can be done in further videos. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.